Hello students. In this problem we're going to use something called Duhamel's principle to solve a non-homogeneous PDE and what makes this PDE non-homogeneous is this term here the f of x t. So here we have the heat equation and uh, it's we're adding a um, either a heat source or it's going to be heat sink. So if F is positive, then you're adding heat to this uh, equation. If F is negative, then you're taking away heat. You're draining it. Okay, so we'll see how that works out um, after we take a look at the solution. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to consider um, the homogeneous form of the problem first, and then we'll introduce F of X later. Um, so you might be asking, wait, can we just do that? And the answer is, um, turns out we can because we're just going to consider the spatial part of the equation, and um, the uh, the f of x um, will get absorbed into um, an integral of the uh, involving the uh, basis functions. Um, and the fancy way of saying that is uh, we're going to project this f into the uh, space of basis functions. But um, uh, you'll see um, how it'll work out. Um, towards the end of the video. Um, so anyways, um, if we just uh, consider only the homogeneous form, then we have something that would look like uh, this PDE here, where we don't have the F anymore. And you remember that with the spatial part, if you um, use separation of variables, you end up with a second order ODE. And uh, you have a boundary value problem. Uh, we have uh, X primed um, at um, 0 is equal to 0. And that comes from uh, this first boundary condition. And then you have x1 um, equals 0, and that comes from this second boundary condition. Uh, then um, we just go ahead and uh, we just implement the boundary conditions, and uh, we end up having uh, the cosine of uh, lambda has to equal uh, 0. So lambda has to be um, an odd multiple of pi. And so um, we get an infinite number of uh, solutions to this um, boundary value problem. And uh, we're now going to um, plug this in to the um, um, solution. And uh, now remember, uh, when we've done separation of variables before, um, we had uh, you know an x times a t, uh, where we had a time component. And uh, I've just taken that time component, and I'm calling that u sub n of t. Okay, so. Um, so this is what our solution looks like as far as this Fourier expansion goes. Okay, now we're going to take this solution and we're going to substitute it into the PDE, and uh, I'm going to take the PDE and I'm going to rewrite it um, as u, the derivative of u with respect to t minus d u x x equals f. So I just moved the derivative um, terms on the left hand side and left the f on the right hand side. Um, so now I'm going to take this Fourier expansion. And I'm going to substitute it into the PDE. So if I differentiate this term with respect to t, the only things that are going to get touched are the u naught and the un. So I'll put dots over those for the derivative. The cosine term does not get touched. If I take two derivatives with respect to x, then uh, of course the u naught uh, goes away. And I take one derivative of cosine, I get a minus sign. I take another derivative, I get a cosine. And of course, every time I do that, um, I have to use a chain rule and an n minus 1 half pi pops out, so I get an n minus 1 half pi quantity squared. So now I have u, um, the derivative of u with respect to t and u x x, and so then I just substitute those into this form of the PDE, so I'll have um, the 1 half u dot um, u naught um, minus, minus um, this sum, right, because it's minus u x x from this term here, but um, it's uh, so the minus minus makes that a plus, so that's why I have a plus sign there. And then I'll have a un dot plus a unt, which is here, and then I'll have this coefficient, and both these have a cosine, so I just factor that out. Okay, so um, this stuff here and the sum is just this cosine factored out with the un dot and the un with this um, uh, term here, and then I inserted a d in there. Okay, and the minus minus makes that this term here a plus. And then, of course, that's equal to fxt. All right, so now um, that I have uh, that form of the, uh, uh, the, the PDE, um, I'm going to use orthogonality to solve for these uns. 
and uh, what I do is um, you know I'm going to integrate against cosine and so I'll use that um, uh, um, inner product notation and so um, I'll take the inner product um, which is just an integral of uh, u naught against cosine um, or u naught dot against cosine and uh, plus and then I I'll just integrate term by term here so it'd be a cosine against another cosine where I'll have a maybe cosine m versus a cosine n term and then um, I'll integrate a cosine against this f and I'll call that fm where fm is the integral this is what the inner product looks like it's whatever that function is integrated against cosine of m minus one half pi x okay so um, recall that um, this integral will just go to zero and uh, this integral will go to zero if n is not equal to m and it'll go to one if n is equal to m all right so that leaves me with um, one ode in time and uh, that's just this coefficient here and um, I get this ODE and um, if you're wondering what the initial condition is well just use the initial condition you have ux0 zero equals zero on the one hand on the other hand if I plug a zero into um, my uh, solution up here of a one half u naught of zero plus this series and then I just use orthogonality again so I'm just going to do this inner product game again um, with cosine m's and then it'll be um, this term will be zero if n is not equal to m and it'll be one of zero uh, I'm sorry if m is equal to n and uh, this term will be zero so I'll have um of zero equals zero so that will give me um, my initial value for this problem okay well anyways I solved this um, initial value problem and this is the solution so here's the particular solution and here's the homogeneous part and this you may recall from a previous video uh, on Duomo's principle this um, this right here is Duomo's principle um, so I in, in effect I just solved this by an integrating factor right so the integrating factor here is going to be e to the integral of this uh, this term here um, and then after I integrate that with respect to t, I just get this term here, and then I multiply everything by that exponential, integrate both sides, and this is what we get. Um, this is the particular solution. Here's the homogeneous solution. Now, if I plug in t as 0, of course, this integral goes to 0. This goes to 1, and I end up with c being 0 by the initial condition. And uh, I can take this term here and slide it past the integral because this is an integral with respect to tau, and that's a minus d. And all this stuff which looks like this stuff here except there are differences in signs so I can just factor that out and it's a um, t minus tau where the minus sign is factored out so it's minus t plus tau and if you were to distribute the minus sign you'd see minus t plus tau here but I factored the minus out so that it looks like I have an ex a decaying exponential that's why I left it in that form um, so that is Duomo's principle. So I have this integral here, which looks like a convolution integral. And now that I have the um, I'm just going to plug that in to um, this form. I'm sorry, this uh, form of the solution. And there we go. That is the solution to our PDE, um, where uh, this term in the brackets uh, come. That's Duomo's principle, and that comes from the homogeneous part. And so now you can see that yes, you are. Um, if f is positive, then you still have your decaying exponential, but um, uh, you're integrating with this f term, so you're just going to keep adding heat to um, to your source, uh, to your uh, to your temperature. So this would be a source term, and um, as t goes to infinity, um, it looks like this is going to um, go to zero. But uh, in fact, um, um, it yes, it's going to um, actually keep adding uh, um, a heat to it so it depends on what your boundary conditions are and it looks like here you have an insulated boundary condition it depends what your initial condition is if f was negative then um, you'd be you'd have a minus sign here and your your um, solution would be losing heat from the initial condition okay all right uh, good luck